Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to Car Stereo Lab, the Morel edition. That's right, we have the Morel system getting ready to go into Haley's Car Stereo Lab. But before we do that, Fernando. Welcome to the show, guys. Today we're gonna to talk to you about the Morel Maximo six and a half coaxles and the new component HEs, as well as the subwoofer. We're gonna get them into our car. We're gonna sit back, relax, and enjoy, and listen to a little bit of sexiness that is the Morel Maximo line. Let's roll the intro, and I'll see you on the other side. Morel reached out to us when they came out with the new Maximo version of the 602HE. Formerly, this was the Maximus speaker. However, there was some confusion there. Maximo, Maximus. It was even hard for me to remember. So they said, you know what? Hey, we, we have an idea. We're just going to migrate them into the Maximo line. We'll call them the HE. And there we go. We'll be all set and ready to it. So before we start unboxing it, we always want to do a box check and see what kind of information we have to deal with. If there's anything of value across. So on the side of the box here, they give you a ton of information that is like super Super handy. Magnet system, voice coil, diameter, mounting depth, voice coil wire. Have you ever seen anyone put voice coil wiring on their like box? I don't think anybody does that. Impedance, sensitivity, max, power, frequency response, power hand, and crossover point. But there again, two things right next to one another that most manufacturers you gotta like pray that they give you. For this, the tweeter crosses over at 3200 hertz. That's pretty awesome. Let's take a look at these if you've never seen them before and see how they're going to fit in the car. First thing you get with any product, it seems like, is the owner's manual. Inside this one, you get this giant Morel sticker. I'm a sucker for stickers, as I know most of you guys are. Morel always gives you a decent size sticker. This thing is so sexy cool. Inside, you'll find the instructions for mounting the tweeter, all the parts that come with it, how to install the capacitor for the tweeter, which is your base blocker. And then on the back page, they give you some of the general specifications. This system is four ohm, 90 watts normal power, 180 watts max, 94 dBs of efficiency, frequency responses, 60 to 22,000 Hertz. The voice coil for the mid-range is 1.18 inches. The tweeter is a one inch dome. The magnet system for the mid base is a hybrid magnet system. The tweeter is neodymium. The mounting depth for the six and a half is two and a half inches. For the tweeter is 0.8 inches. Next we have our two mid base. Taking a closer look, we have a rubber surround, treated cloth cone, cloth dust cap. The surround here where the screws go is a hard plastic. Flipping it over onto the back. This is part of the crossover system. This doesn't have giant passive crossovers. That's for HE, high efficiency. It's not only with the speaker, it's also with the install. It streamlines the install down, makes things easier. The stamp steel basket has this cool cutout on it. It also has Morel stamped into it. This is not a off the shelf part. This is something they actually have made. Looking at the speaker, you'll see here it has these two terminals that the crossover connects to and it is epoxy coated. That's because you flip it over to the other side and here is where you hook up for your mid-range. They do this to make it a little bit easier for the installation. Standard style, big magnet. It's got some weight to it. These things have an exceptional value to them. If you ever get the opportunity to hear them, I strongly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. Moving on next to the tweeter. The tweeter comes with a couple different mounts. It has the standard angle mount. It can mount on both sides, either right here or right here. It has a hole and some screws in the back. Then it has this giant flush mount here. If you're gonna put it in the corner of something that you have that's flat, you can do this. As well as if you can flush mount it into something, it comes with this cool mount here. Push on it from the bottom, the tweeter will come out and the grill will come off. It's gonna go in a location where you don't have to worry about people touching it. it has this little don't touch me bar in the front of it. You have two of the passive crossovers for the tweeter with plenty of wire. It's like four feet of wire. It's an insane amount of wire. Screws and other style clips speaker terminals, and the brackets to mount the tweeter into place. 
when using this flush mount here, they go like this. For the rears, we're gonna be doing a set of the Maximo Ultra 602 coaxials. Let's take a look at the box and see what we got. Same, just like model number, model number. Let's go to the end and see what is on the end. Magnet system type, high grade ferrite magnet, voice coil diameters, frequency response. Let's see here, type of voice coil. Move it around to the other side. And they have that same stuff listed here, which we know most of that stuff is in the owner's manual. So let's dig inside and grab the owner's manual. We have the cool sticker that we were knowing they were gonna come with. Like I said, they all give you this nice sticker. Opening it up. In this line, Maximo, they make a four, five, six, and a six by nine coaxial. They give you a general overview of how to install it in the car, as well as the rest of that information that was on the side of the box here in the inside. That is broken up depending on what size speaker you have. The six and a half is four ohm. 90 watts of power handling with a 160 watt peak. 91 dBs of efficiency, a frequency response for 55 to 20,000 hertz. The voice coil diameter for the six and a half is one inch. For the tweeter is 0.8. The voice coil is made out of copper. The magnet is a high grade ferrite magnet for the six and a half and neodymium for the tweeter. And the mounting depth is two and a half inches. What we've learned from all of this is that Morale does a really good job of sharing as much information as they can about their speakers for you. They even give you even more information the, the higher end you go. Underneath these two doors here are the grills. These do come with some Morel grills if you're interested in them. Bag of screws, bag of sticky tack for the grills, speaker terminals, and the speaker itself. Let's take a closer look. The speaker is a little bit different than the HE. If you'll notice right away, this cone is a gray material. That is not a play on white, as you can see here black, gray. They do also make a regular Maximo six and a half that does have that gray cone if you feel you need to have all colors match. This is not the hard plastic. This is a rubber top piece here. This is rubber as well. The tweeter has a very similar looking bridge as the bigger standalone treated cloth tweeter. Of course, they have the nice silk screened Maximo Ultra on it. Flipping it over, a little bit smaller magnet. That one comes in the six and a half as could be expected. However, it has that same basket with the morale stamped into the side as the other speaker. This has a rubber boot on it. Crossover for the tweeter is located right here and it is wired up through the magnet. So if for some reason you did want to go full active on this, you can by grabbing these wires here and here. Otherwise, you can slide on your terminals. The smaller one is a negative, the bigger one is the positive. Get it into the car. Here's a side profile shot of the speaker. Next up, let's take a look at the amplifier we're gonna be powering these six speakers with. Definitely one of the most hidden gems in the Morel line is the three MPS amplifiers they make. They do make two new 45th anniversary amplifiers, but the MPS is the original amplifier they've been making for a very long time now. They make a mono block, they make a four channel, which is this guy right here, the 4.400, and they make a five channel. The really cool thing about these is they're all super affordable, and the five channel is a D-class mono block and an AB class four channel, all combined into one. This this is an AB class amplifier, so the 4.400 is all AB. The 1.550 is a D class. What they've tried to do is come out with amplifiers that complement their speakers really well and have that AB that the audiophile would want when buying an audiophile speaker. Let's take a look at the box here real quick. Just gives you some of the basic information about the amplifier. That class AB is located here. Moving to the side, rated power is 100 watts at 2 ohm, 70 watts at 4 ohm. Bridging the channels is 200 watts. On the back of the box, we get a basic size of the amplifier, 12.4 inches, as well as two inches tall by 6.7 inches. The only difference between the amplifiers is the length. So the Monobloc D-Class is a little bit smaller and the five channel AB D-Class amplifier is a little bigger. Owner's manual is first thing that is up. Flipping it over, we have a high gloss owner's manual. Digging deep inside, 
the do's and don'ts of putting an amplifier in your car, what all the little switches on the top of the amplifier mean, how to do basic installation of an amplifier, different installation configurations that you might want to do, several of them, and then it moves on to the monoblock amplifier. So all the amplifiers are in represented inside of this one owner's manual. In the bottom underneath here you'll find three allen wrenches and some screws. The amplifier comes in a bag packed in foam. The basic appearance of the amplifier, as you see, is very elegant. Morel logo right here up on top. Does not come off and cannot be flipped around. I know, would be nice, but hey. On the side here, we also have the cool little Morel logos and also the dots that are associated with the Lotus grill that they put on the super high-end tweeter. And then we have all our inputs located here. And then, if you'll notice, there's two screw points right here, and this is what hides all our inputs and crossovers and the ability to actually use the amplifier. This cover panel here is metal. It makes a great ruler if you decide not to put it back onto the amplifier. Anytime you remove a cover like that, I do recommend putting the screws back into the top of the amplifier so you don't lose them. Let's take a closer look at what we have silk screened here on the top of the amplifier. Starting with the actual functionality of the amplifier, it has a selector switch for the type of remote turn on you're going to be using dc offset remote turn on as well as signal sense group a is for channels one and two group b is for channels three and four each group has the option of input level control whether you want it to be low pass full range or high pass and a variable crossover between 40 and 400 hertz. If you slide the amplifier down and you take a look at this cool silk screen here, this is explaining what each one of the features below it does. The first thing up are the power and protect lights, followed by ground, which can be a four gauge, remote turn on, and 12 volt power. Group A is first, followed by group B. You have inputs for group a, left and right, and inputs for group B, left and right. Next to that is a switch for voltage select. If you want to use this high level, you're gonna come in through the RCA section of the amplifier. High level, you press in. If you're using standard RCAs, you leave it pushed out. Next is input, meaning are we gonna be using this to power something where we only have one RCA input, or are we gonna be using both RCA inputs? Push it in for two channel input, and leave it out for four channel input. And this case we'll be leaving it out for four channel input we will be using low level input because we have the aftermarket radio that's going to plug into this there are little tiny rubber covers over these right now that need to come off before we plug in our rcas for the subwoofer we're doing this guy here the 10 inch Primo subwoofer. Heading over to the side of the box here, they list all of the Primos. They make an eight, a 10, and a 12, 250, 300, 350 respectively, and 89, 90, 91 dBs. They're all single voice coils. The voice coil diameter is two inches. Various weights and stuff like that. The other side has the same information on it. Owner's manual's right on top. They give you air space for sealed and ported. They also give you the curve of the box. They show you how to connect the woofers, various configs. Getting inside, rubber surround. Dust cap is silver. Yeah, that's right, it's silver. Cone is made out of a treated cloth. When you look at the back side, you can see the cloth material here stitched. And then when you look over on the front, this feels like it has some kind of a resin on top of it. There is an optional grill for it that will keep all the nonsense from getting inside of it, such as soccer bags and whatnot. We're gonna be putting this in a 110 ported enclosure in the rear. I'm gonna get this off to Fernando so we can get it into the box. Next step is to get these in and listen to them in the lab. This is the Haley lab. Fernando already has the rear speakers in. Let's take a look. Fast rings and sound treatment. All the things a speaker wants in order to sound really nice. Passenger door is in. One of the things you have to remember about these speakers is that the crossover, which this will be a passive system, is mounted to the basket. You have to be very careful when putting that in. Why, Fernando? In some of the doors, the shape it's weird. So in this one, the crossover hits one of the metals. If you flip, the speaker goes right in. So keep that in mind because if you crush the crossover, 
Well, for one, you're crushing the crossover, or two, you could short out the speaker. And that is the last speaker he's gonna be putting in. Next, I'm finishing up the tweeters mounts, so I'll get those to him. For that, we made this cool three-piece acrylic mount that lines our tweeter up using the factory screw down points. Here is our passive crossover all set. Just gonna apply some tape to this, and he can get this into the car. And the amplifier is also installed in the lab. Fernando got the speaker screwed in, as you saw, and set into place. Now, no matter how good of an installer you are, you always have to polarity check your speakers. It's something simple you can do. Just make sure they're all moving the right direction. Nothing sucks worse than having one out, one backwards, you know, just flip the wrong way. Fernando's check the other side. That means we have all our speakers going in the right direction. This ride does not have a DSP. Howard's it's got a camera radio. He's an eye test mic. He's on our Educar test and tune app on our phone. So we can play with this EQ just a little bit, get our crossovers dialed in, get our EQ dialed in, and have some fun. Always save your settings if your radio has that capability. This one does. Have to load the DRM free music. Oh goody. Unlike the last time, we definitely don't want to let the smoke out of this. But it makes for good video. You guys only get to hear the DRM stuff. Yeah. I apologize. We've been listening to all the other stuff that you know you guys would normally listen to. And as expected, I love the way the morels sound. They have a very smooth and precise tweeter. It's very natural sounding. And these are just terms that people use and throw out there. And what I think is natural sounding to you, you might not. But I, I just, I really enjoy a silk soft dome. And yeah. They, they don't disappoint at all. They never disappoint. They never disappoint. They never disappoint. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this. If you're interested in picking yourself up somewhere else, you can go check and see what they have available at morelhifi.com. These are the Maximo Ultra HEs up here in the front. The MPS 400.4 powering them, along with the coaxial Maximos in the back, and the Primo 10-inch subwoofer. Primo. Sounds amazing. It does sound yeah. amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you have a great night. We'll see you later next time. Bye, guys.